Welcome everybody, Double Tap here, and before I continue, I just wanted to apologize to my subscribers and viewers who were left in the dark wondering if I was ever going to make a part 2 to the original Banish tutorial, and wondering if this channel was just completely dead. I want to reassure you all that I fully intend on keeping the tutorials for Banished and many other games coming your way. So, with that being said, let's just continue where we left off in the last video. To the south, we have our Forester's Lodge being built, and as you can see, all these little people in the winter time are moving and making things happen all our farmers are now laborers as I was saying in the previous video whenever they can't do their job because of something restrictions as far as weather goes or anything like that they will just turn into a laborer immediately it's a really convenient addition to this game worth noting from the event log you can see that Patrice has become an adult and is now working as a laborer in this game, when somebody hits adulthood, they are immediately considered a laborer, and at that point you can dictate their profession. Conversely, children are unable to work in this game. All they do is use resources, but that's alright because it doesn't take too long for them to hit adulthood and start reproducing themselves. Again, another benefit of having the boarding house, everybody being in one place. Actually, for the proof of that, you can see down below that we've already had four children being born. So this is one of the benefits of using the boarding house instead of trying to build in individual homes is that the reproduction rate actually happens quite quick for beginning game, which is ideal because you're trying to build up this little town and the more laborers you have, the bigger you can make the city. Now, if you actually click the boarding house here, you can see all the names of everybody that's inside, whether they're adults or children. And you can also see the inventory and resources that you're holding within that. So, as you can see, the game was giving us warnings saying our food is low. But if you actually look at our food inside the home, you can see that our food is just fine. It's just telling us that our storage is low on food. So, worry not. Here, I'm just continuing my OCD and making sure that everything looks squared and perfect. Love sending my little minions to work. Seeing it all come to life, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And winter is over. We are now back into spring and everything's going to clear up and you can see right away all our farmers go back to being farmers and are no longer laborers and they get right to work immediately planting crops first thing in the spring. Okay, and for the next little bit here, I'm not going to be placing anything else down. I'm just going to be allowing our workers to go to work, our farmers to do their thing, and all the rest of our laborers to start clearing all this iron and stone out of the south, so that when our foresters' lodge is built up and they start going to work, they have all that area to use. So, for the next little bit, let's just enjoy this soundtrack and watch all these minions go to work. And if it becomes too monotonous, I may just speed up some of these spots until it gets back to a relevant point of where I can start talking again. Until then, enjoy. Alright, now if you look next to our event log, you can see that we have our inventory log and it tells us that it's late spring and you can see that our farmers are well on their way and all these vegetables are on the go, so that's good. I'm ready to start placing down some more buildings. The next building that I'm intending to drop down is going to be the trading post. Now. The trading post is important because it allows you to add multiple things into the game such as livestock and it allows you to grow your inventory of vegetables that you're able to produce. Now these things are important because there is a happiness level to the civilization. In order to keep your people happy over a period of time, they need a variety of things. They don't want to just be eating the same vegetables all the time. So adding in a variety of different vegetables for them to be able to grow and adding in other things such as livestock that they're going to be able to create leather and make meat out of, it's very important to the happiness level. So that's why the trading post is definitely important to get down early game and get that on the go as well.
And because the trading post is so important and it's absolutely necessary that we utilize this as soon as possible, I am once again going to use the increase priority tool here, click it, highlight over the entire trading post. And this just tells our people that we want them again to build this over priority over everything else. So it's, it's important to do that if you are trying to expedite the process of getting something done fast. And as you could see, in the south there, all the stone is almost completely cleared out, along with the iron, and that's exactly what I was hoping to see. So once that Forester's Lodge is finally up and operational, all that plot of land could be used accordingly. And now we can see that the farmers are once again starting to gather all the bundles up, moving it into the storage bin and then from there the storage bin they are going to again move it into their boarding house and that's exactly what we're hoping to see it will not be an issue for these farmers to gather it there's plenty of time it's still summer it's quite a distance away from winter time when this would freeze and rot so everything is working perfectly smooth as planned our fishermen are still going to work hard our food levels are going way up as you can see we're about to hit 500 food oh it just skyrocketed to 700 actually so yeah it's going to it's going to increase quite quickly here because they're obviously gathering such large quantities of food but as our population grows it is important that we still stay on top of expanding our actual farmland especially beginning game farmland is pretty much the only way that you're going to be getting the majority of your food yes fishing does produce food but when you look at the quantities of foods that farmers produce versus the fishing the fishing is quite minuscule it is a bonus that it can be used throughout the entire year but nonetheless your priority is definitely going to be your farming so we are going to add three extra orchards here as you can see so that we could get some apples going and this again goes with the whole flow of what i was saying earlier we want to expand the amount of foods that our people can eat so adding some fruits to this is going to increase the happiness level of our people once again and obviously going to increase the production of the amount of food that we are making so let's just I'm gonna add some roads here, make sure that everything's cleaned and squared off. And there we go. For next season, we have three orchards operational and they will be ready to go with the rest of the farming land. I am once again going to utilize this increased priority tool and just highlight this last orchard field here so that it can clear off that little tree on there and it will allow it to turn into an operational field just so that next year, everything is good to go. It'll be smooth and operational. All right, now that that's done, we can see that our trading post is well on its way. All the resources have been brought over to it. Everything on its land has been removed. It is just a matter of the builders completing it off. So that's great. I love seeing that. You can actually see that our farmers are being proactive. And even though it's early autumn, the orchards have already begun. That's awesome news. Why not? I cannot blame them on their hustle there. I respect it. Good job, farmers. You're doing your thing. So. I am going to add three more plots of farmland here. I'm going to have two of them be farms and one of them be an orchard to keep everything uniform and everything going in a row here. So we'll add those right now so that we could stay on top of our production next year because we are going to expand the civilization and there's a lot of baby making happening in that boarding house. So we're going to stay on top of it. Another thing we're going to do to add on top of the resources that we're going to be collecting is drop a gatherer's hut. Now I like to put my gatherer's hut with the forester's lodge because the gatherer like to gather things from forests and considering the forest lodge is literally creating a forest i think that the two work in unison just nice but i'm not quite done there just with the gatherer's hut one more building i am going to drop into the south with the forester's lodge is going to be the hunting cabin for the same reasons as the gatherer's hut i find that a lot of the wildlife happens in the forest and everything so why not place that alongside the forester as well it's not going to impede the forester's ability to plant and cut down trees so i like placing them all together one last final thing i'm going to do before i wrap this video up is just smooth out all these roads make sure everything's lined up again and send all those people on the way to make sure that everything is looking beautiful and like a operational intentional town 
Now, I think this would be a perfect spot to cut this video, but before I continue, I would just like to take a second and say I really appreciate everybody who took the time out to message me on my part one and ask for the part two. Every single comment was so positive. I really do appreciate the positivity and you guys have motivated me to keep this channel going and I will not let you guys down. But once again thank you for watching like and subscribe if you would like to see anything else like this any more tutorials for any other games i'm open to hearing all your guys suggestions in the comments please let me know until next time this is double tap have a great day